Hi everyone, I'm Fabiana Corredor, the Marketing Director at Oxys, and I'm very excited to be here today with one of our fastest growing service lines at Oxys, that is our RPA practice. And we're gonna be talking a little bit about what it is to work in the RPA practice. And for those of you that are maybe considering to jumpstart a career in RPA or just looking to maybe switch to Oxys, some of the considerations of what it's like to work here. So for that, I have the pleasure to have with me Eduardo Diquez, that is the head of our intelligent automation practice, and two of our most tenured senior RPA developers that have been with us since the beginning, Jonathan and Luis. And we're gonna be focusing the interview a lot on what it's been their journey for them since they started. So let's just get right into it and let's start maybe with you, Jonathan. Um, tell us a little bit about your background, like how did you start at Oxys and how did you decide to join the RPA practice? All right, um, so basically I started as a service desk analyst, so my background has always been technical. Um, then I started growing, uh, I moved to um, uh, level two team lead, and then I actually moved, my RPA actually opened, and um, so I moved, we, we actually started uh, kind of a, of a practice, right? So, um, How long ago was that? I think like four years ago, if I'm not mistaken, right? almost five years ago and um, well it's been a great journey actually because I, I started uh, as an RPA developer and actually then I became a, a senior RPA developer. And what made you kind of like you managed to make the change from services to RPA? Like what got you excited? Well actually I, I investigated a little bit about RPA and I saw that definitely that was like my career path that's what I like uh, like the innovation learning new things new challenges and that's that's pretty great. That's basically what, what I like. Awesome. Well, it's been a journey. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Luis? Well, it's uh, pretty much the same. We started uh, at the same time, almost nine years ago. Um, I was also a service uh, agent and then moved to a team lead. And then I was moved to uh, the Network Operations Center. I was an agent at NOC. And then at that point, uh, the RPA practice opened. So, I, well, I got promoted to that department. And yeah, that was um, almost five years ago. I was the third person, I believe, on the department. And yeah, well, the reason I moved there be is because I was studying computer science and well, it's pretty much um, development and that kind of thing. So I liked it. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, bo both of you came from the service desk background, but I know, Eddie, we also have other developers in the organization that maybe have come from backgrounds that are not necessarily as technical. So do you want to share maybe some of those backgrounds that are different? Sure, Fabi. So our team is, you know, we have people from every background, people that came from actual business operations, finance and accounting, even customer service, people that had no technical background in the past, and that's one of the beauties of RPA. Uh, that you can really get trained uh, into the technology and that there is a lot of benefit of having different backgrounds as part of RPA because it's really a business-led solution. It's not, uh, even though it's a technical solution, yeah. uh, having the business impact and, and business background uh, really helps developers to design really good solutions for our clients. Yeah, and we were talking a, li a little bit about that because I think people are ex some people are excited about RPA, but they feel that because they don't come from a technical background, they are not gonna be able to actually ramp up. And we were talking about, you know, definitely certain backgrounds and technical skills would make it faster and easier for them. So can you tell a little bit some of those backgrounds that um, you have seen worked? Yeah, well, definitely um, having a, a technical background that, that helps, but as Eduardo mentions, uh, any other background, business background, it actually helps as well because mm -hmm. they know about the business and they may have clients that, uh, that they do kind of the same, so that, that helps. Uh, but from a technical perspective, I think having uh, knowledge in different programming languages, maybe, like Java, uh, C Sharp, things like that, that uh, helps you to have like a better understanding of, of the whole of the whole RPA thing. So um, I think that's mainly uh, maybe databases knowledge like SQL mm -hmm. that that's going to help you as well. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's not limited just to yeah. development um, languages. We can also 
have some understanding on Excel and macros, that kind of things will help as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for those of you that don't know, a big part of our RPA practice is focused around UiPath, that, you know, it's the number one RPA platform in the market. And I think one of the things that differentiates UiPath is the self training and all of the online academy that they have out there, right? So what would typically be, I, I would say, the path for someone that hasn't done anything in RPA? Like, what are the courses that you would typically recommend to go and then do more the advanced stuff? Yeah, as you mentioned, um, UiPath has a great academy. It has a lot of uh, topics in there that you can cover. Um, it goes from the very basic to the experienced um, kind of things. So actually, uh, you can just learn UiPath by going on, on the academy and starting there. That's mm -hmm. pretty much. Yeah, the, there are several several learning plans that uh, definitely you can go through, like like the foundations, for example, and you can start from there, then move into advanced, and, and then it will take you like to an architect uh, uh, learning plan. Uh, but definitely for starters, uh, there are like foundation uh, learning plans. Um, they even have a, a free license that you can use while you learn. Yeah. So that's very, very useful as well. Right. And Eddie, you know, we're growing a lot. I know we're hiring a lot of positions both in Costa Rica, where we are right now, and in Colombia. Um, and, you know, since this is a brand new world, I know there's there's not a lot of UiPath developers in the market, so you're having to actually train them in the organization. So do you want to talk a little bit about what are, like, the must-haves that you typically get when we hire from the beginning versus some of the things that we are more open to teaching them here when they join? Yes, so we definitely are growing really fast and uh, for as much talent as the market is demanding, you can't hire uh, those people already from the market. You just won't find them. It's really even hard to keep them. So we've now gone through the past of really developing our RPA talent, hiring people that have no experience, uh, but have a technical inclination, technical background. Uh, people who are tech savvy are pretty much the, the good candidates that we're looking for and that have really good communication skills. As it's a little bit different being an RPA developer than a back-end developer, where a back-end developer is just building their solution and they can do that on a vacuum and have the solution done and then review it. Mm -hmm. Where RPA developers need to be in constant communication with, with, with the business, constant communication with their clients. Uh, so that is a key thing that we're looking mm -hmm. as part of hiring. Uh, what about the level of English? Yes, so a lot of what we do naturally as a US based organization that is providing services in the near shore model to the United States, English is a keystone of what we expect for our developers to have. Uh, that being said, you know, we once that skill set is in, we can do all of the training for RPA development, go through the university, like these guys have said, but then there's the next level, which is actually getting hands-on experience of how to actually build, you know, solutions that are real world useful to our clients. And, and that takes about, you know, six to eight months to mm -hmm. have a really good RPA developer as part of the team that they can do solutions on their own that mm -hmm. do not require uh, a lot of the supervision of these guys that have a lot of experience.